uh, that might tell you about the <laughs> about how things change for the worse and where are we with this today now so can you see now this this photo yes we can yes okay so it's um as you can see uh, obviously i need to explain what it is um it was um, uh, apparently uh, the fifth billion uh, human on the earth was born in zagreb in 1987 so the, um, the UN, uh, United Nations Fund for the Population Activities, brought this meter, population meter, to Belgrade to the president then of the, of the Yugoslav government. And basically, the meter is there calculating the world population. You see it, it shows here more than 8 billion. So obviously, it was slightly, slightly over the top. Then, then, uh, and it shows the country population. Now, this was recorded in uh, 2019. The country population, it's Yugoslavia. And it says 28 million. So obviously, by now, by the projections of that time, um, there will be 29 million inhabitants, say, of Yugoslavia in uh, 2022. Uh, well, obviously, you know that the result is that actually we today uh, in the region of the former Yugoslavia, we have like 21 million. So that's the estimate more, most probably it's even less than 21 million. Um, maybe these projections were overly optimistic, these demographic projections, but generally we would have ex expected that today in this area there will be 20 26 million people 27 million people so so obviously we have six seven million missing either they were not born or simply people people uh, uh fled or decided to leave the region so i'm starting i'm starting with this uh, demographic fact because it tells you all about our projections at one point uh, according to the available data Obviously, population data in '87 did not did not think about uh, the, the the breakdown of the system after after it, it, 1989. Uh, uh, obviously, could not know that uh, that in the '90s uh, and in 2000s we are going to go, go through enormous, tremendous economic transformation, not only of this region but of entire post-socialist post-socialist Europe that the result will be more poverty and also population decline, huge social inequalities, uh, uh, and uh, that, that uh, basically, um, of course, it couldn't calculate things called war uh, when they happen and when they destroy the existing infrastructure. And not only that, but as we can see today in the Ukraine, the very social tissue of a society destroys human lives, human relationship for the years to come. Now, I started with this uh, uh, in order to, to, to open up this, this, this discussion on economy and the youth um, with one important question that I always ask my student or that I'm trying to convince my student to, 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 to find the answer to is do you know your place in the world and and i'm always astonished by the lack of basic economic knowledge look i'm not an economist myself uh, i'm a writer i'm political theorist but we are all forced to deal with economic matters as bashkim explained it's not just the numbers it's human lives uh, uh, that are behind these numbers and the shocks that are now global, not only regional, not only Western Balkans, not only post-socialist Europe, whatever, but the global affect directly the lives, our, our lives. And as I will say to my students, their lives. Uh, the, the difficulty to understand abstract processes um, such as globalization, to understand how it affects you um, is, is sometimes a, it's, it's a problem. Uh, it's a problem because we are not able to, to process this information. We are not able to really grasp to what extent an event in China, to what extent uh, growth in Taiwan that reduced the production of semiconductors, as we all know, chips, yeah? uh, and in the context of the pandemic would basically 
uh, stop an entire entire industries such as say automobile industries and will push us furthermore into the into the crisis of, of prices demand supply and so on so the the question is of course we do find tr trying to find our place in the world from the position of the balkans of course obviously we accept technology we are using it right now we have we all have smartphones and so on but do we actually know what is really happening now uh what define the lives of my students so that's the question i'm asking myself uh obviously many many things define my life so i start with me and then we'll go back to my student um number one was 89 yeah so the huge tremendous change uh for for us uh, uh in the former yugoslavia at that point it was a celebratory moment that the berlin wall fell down so now everybody will be free to to travel like we were free to travel nobody could really pro, uh, 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 know the consequences of this of this event we, we will get to know them soon already in 1990 1991 with the so-called democratization that uh, um, brought the country into chaos and also into into war so obviously there was a war and then what we thought in the 90s when the war happened and as Bashki mentioned I was a refugee in, in Croatia and lived there we were just hoping that we're gonna catch up Huh? Everyone else is going forward. Europe is getting united. It's a brave new world of uh, shared liberal values. Only the former Yugoslavia, that part that's been isolated slightly by, uh, in order to prevent the uh, conflict from spreading, will be able to join this uh, wonderful world once everything is over. So, well, it took us 10 years to get out of this chaos of wars uh, uh, throughout the territory of, of Yugos former Yugoslavia in order to get to propel us directly into the neoliberal world, neoliberal world of certain ec economic dogmas, which is, of course, based on, on a certain idea of free market economy, on the invisible hand of the market that will sort everything, on the trickle down. A promise that okay although some some people are getting insanely rich uh there will be something for the poor as well and of course on the idea that privatizations of everything is a way forward is the way forward for the markets and the societies and so on so as i was doing my studies in france and and in in, in the states things uh the first signs of trouble were already there and obviously you remember 2008 uh, the crash, financial crash uh, that happened in the States when I when I was there, uh, observing for a couple of years a madness of the so-called subprime uh, credit market. And that changed lives of millions, and we are still under the shadow of, of this debacle of neoliberal economics without knowing how to find a way out. Now, by a sheer number of coincidences, I ended up in Britain, and, and now I, I'm teaching in Belgrade, or between Belgrade and Ljubljana. I, I got back to this region. So I'm one of these who did come back. I didn't think I would, but I did come back. And of course, I can see the region that is, that is in, in this respect, socially and economically, in a very, very bad uh, state. What is actually happening with this region? Now, some of you will recognize in what I'm saying, of course, the world system theory of the core capitalist country and then semi-periphery around them and then the periphery now allow me to to use it uh, uh for for the pur purpose of our discussion as well uh obviously um speaking about yugoslavia in 89 90 it was a country like many other countries who had economic crisis but it was generally seen as a semi-peripheral country very close to the very center of the capitalist economy yeah? namely italy and then austria germany and so on and connected with these econ economies. Uh, today, uh, the post-Yugoslav states, or, and, and also other Balkan states, uh, are, are obviously the, somewhere between semi-periphery and periphery. So semi-periphery would mean that you still have something to offer uh, to the, the core countries in terms of services, um, educated, educated people, educated youth. Uh, that you still have some kind of a production, although it's, 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 it's sort of uh, getting reduced, 
but the peripheral uh, the destiny is that you can only offer natural resources for exploitation. Yeah? And so therefore we are getting there. So from semi-peripheral countries,